Brad Garlinghouse is pissed and it has to do with the SEC and the US government. I'm gonna share that action with you along with a little bit of XRP price action. And two big stories regarding hacks and scams and schemes regarding your crypto. I'm telling you right now, pay extra attention to all your stuff. And yes, this is a freezy pop. Who needs a freezy pop? I do. Tough for the purple ones. The purple ones kind of suck. And the orange ones suck as well. Heat map, no, your comments come first. And honestly, probably one of the best comments that I have read in a long time. Just listen to this. Just, this is why viewer comments come first. Because y'all are fucking awesome. Cold Turkey says, Klaus, I have a theory based on my relentless hopium problem. I think the SEC had no intention of settling with Ripple today, but since the Trump assassination step, maybe the SEC was told to lay off pressing Ripple, and at the last minute, they cancel so they can pair for the real settlement negotiation. What you think, bro? I Here's the thing. You're darn straight there's going to be people putting pressure on the SEC. They're not only going to be putting on the SEC pressure because of political reasons, financial reasons. And what's ironic is that's exactly what Brad's saying. I'm going to share that with you. That's why I thought this comment was so perfect because it really ties in with the idea that there's someone higher up pulling strings. And if we see that the crypto vote is swaying the elections, guess what they do? They take a softer approach on crypto, don't they? Punk bitches. Language warning. It's just, I think I have to put a language warning at the beginning of every video. All right, everyone. You ready to do this? Let's do it. Bitcoin's in at 63, 330, 80, 33, 94. BNB at 565. Sol at 155. Sol ETF expected to be next. XRP down big. But remember, it pumped bigger than the rest too. So you got to be fair, right? Play it both ways. Good or bad. All right, listen to this. Brought a story up earlier about hackers stealing $235 million from Wazir X. Okay, native token drops a bunch. Okay, you want those details? Check out that video. That's not what this is about. This is about this too. Mount Gox creditors reporting brute force login attempts. Okay, so when the crypto market is flowing, when money is flowing, when there's a lot of hype, a lot of hopium and juicy money. Dude, hackers want a piece of it. So now that they know that the Mt. Gox stuff is starting to get paid out, people are trying to break into these accounts, right? Go in, just brute force. Basically, they're trying to hack the passwords on login. That, that's all they're trying to do. And they're trying to go in there and change the payout information. What they don't know, though, is you cannot change the payout information like that. That stuff is already set in stone. But people are trying it. Why are they trying it? Because money is flowing. Because payouts are getting ready. Because some naughty, nefarious people out there want your crypto. So seriously, be safe. I mean, like, take extra precautions. You get an email that you think is suspicious. Whoa, don't you dare do shit with that thing. You get a message and you're like, nah, I don't know. You're probably right. I don't know is the answer. Be very careful because for a few months, all these hack scams and schemes were super quiet, but now they're starting to flare up because they know money is flowing. Who wants to steal from the poor? No one. You steal when people are rich. All right, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and Crypto Regs, the 2024 uh, election impact. Okay, listen, listen to this. Okay, we're going to talk about election stuff impact. We're going to talk about XRP price action along with Brad saying even more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Garlinghouse expressed frustration that the U.S. is lagging behind other countries like the U.K., Japan, Singapore, and even the European Union, all of which have established clear frameworks for crypto regs. He lamented that the U.S.'s regulatory ambiguity is causing entrepreneurs and capital to move to more friendly jurisdictions. So Brad's coming out saying exactly what I've been saying. Saying what Coinbase is saying, saying what a lot of you have been thinking. Dude, the SEC and the United States government is pushing jobs and money out of the United States. Now, if you live outside of the United States, you're like, bro, that's freaking cool. But I live in the United States. I don't want my jobs to leave here. That's just the tip of the spear. Listen to this. Brad Garlinghouse says, and, and all this is linked down below, says essentially only in the U.S. is this an issue. Elsewhere, folks from the public and private sectors start out by talking about how profound these technologies are and how they can improve existing systems. Let's strive for that, as we have seen in many countries, instead of partisan BS. Think about this, and this is his quote. Why would we have a Democrat versus Republican dynamic around innovation? Yes, yeah, seriously, why is it that when it comes to like innovation, whether it's financial innovation, energy innovation, 
anything like that. Why is it a partisan issue? Isn't innovation a good thing in what got us here? So think about this. Brad is sitting here going, look, SEC is trying to crush our company. The SEC is pushing jobs out of the United States. By the way, there was a report that came out, and this was published on Coinbase a few months ago, that they suspect about a million high-paying tech jobs have been pushed out of the United States. And we know that the SEC has only gotten worse since that report was published. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of community support. That's why this upsets me. But now Brad is also saying, so wait a minute. Not only are we pushing jobs out, but we're now stalling the innovation by making it partisan. But innovation is what gets us where we are. If we didn't have innovation, what would we all be stuck with? The brick cell phones, right? That's no fun. You like your cell phone now where you could look up stuff, naughty stuff, right? I mean, you know, you could send a little naughty Snapchat to your wife or to your chick. Maybe to your side action. I don't know. Maybe maybe your wife or your husband isn't doing it for you. And you're like, you want me to go snap this? You see what I'm saying? Innovation. So why is it a partisan issue? Well, it's because of control. Speaking of control, do the bears have control right now or is the bulls? I got the price of XRP one month up on the screen and let's do this. Let's switch this out just a little bit and get a little bit more technical with the deets here. And we're going to swap this out to the five minute. I like looking at the five or 15 minute mark. Remember we talked about this right here. If this double bottom doesn't hold and we breach right through that again, we're going to go through. Well, that's what we're testing right now. We're testing this point right here at that 56.5 mark. Here's the deal. We're coming up to the weekend, okay? If we don't get any really good news tomorrow, Friday, okay? I'm making this video on Thursday for those of you that are way further ahead in time. Well, Jesus, I'm so sorry I'm wrong. But if we don't get good news on U.S. Business Day on Friday, we know the weekends have been boring AF. That could set up for yet another buying opportunity. So keep your eyes and ears open. Because think about this, right? The pump that you saw here, you already saw people taking massive amounts of profits. And you're like, bro, what are you talking about profit-wise? That's because a lot of these people here bought at like 42, 43, 44, 45 cents and now are flipping it for 30 to 40% gains in a week. That's juicy action. So be very careful here because if we keep breaking resistance points and touching it on the way down, speaking of touching things down there, no, I'm not doing that today. It's my wife's job. Touch the like and subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. But if we keep breaking through these support levels, sorry, not resistance levels, if we keep breaking through these support levels and we go into the weekend being boring, low volume, big pullback, oh, girlfriend, that's not what we want to see. And you got to suck the juice out of them, too. You just got to suck it, man. That's the deal. So, yeah, we're sitting here fearing low volume for this weekend. And what I want to highlight here is the idea that news can go from good to bad, bad to good quickly. Sentiment can change quickly. Things are always flowing. It's a dynamic global market, especially with crypto. And that's what makes this so interesting and so much fun. See, in the U.S. stock market, we're affected by what? The majority of U.S.-based news. Okay, so it happens during a certain hour time period and a certain day period. Okay, we get it. But with crypto, this is international action. And lately, the international markets, the global crypto markets, have been very quiet volume-wise on weekends. My hope is that we can hold above 55 cents and work our way up from there because we know more bullish news is coming down the pipeline. Are we going to get a rate cut this meeting with the Fed on the 31st? No. By the way, hit that subscribe button because we're going to be doing a live stream on it. And chat is always fun AF. You think we're raunchy in the videos now? Oh, hell no. Chat is way better. Way more raunch. Way more spice. Not only do we that, we got tours coming down the pipe. We've got global outside of the United States money flowing better because economic conditions are getting better. Inflation is easing faster elsewhere in the world, which is good because that would help retail money, right? Discretionary spending would go up. And and if you had an extra, say, 150, 200, 400, 500, 600 a check, maybe an extra 1,000 a check, would you be putting more of that in crypto? So with discretionary spending looking to be on the rise here soon, 
All we got to do is weather this rough storm. And the biggest cloud over our head right now is the SEC. That's for XRP holders and U.S. residents that are getting affected by seeing a sector that they love pushed away. I might have to follow that one of these days and live elsewhere. Argentina with some of my family. Germany with the rest of my family. I don't know. Comment down below on what your thoughts are. Because I'm about to head to the airport and it is storming AF out there. I got my window open so I can see it. It is not looking good. And I got about a two-hour drive to the airport. Got to pick up my parents because they came back from the fatherland. I'll catch you cool cats later. I got to drive. Choo-choo, bitches.